Ryan. Well, thank you. Um, when your name's Ryan and you go by alphabetical order, just about everything's been said, but not everybody has said it yet. So <laughs> let me try and say something a little different. Uh, first to the ch two chairmen, uh, Senator Simpson, uh, Mr. Bowles, uh, each of you have a great reputation of integrity, and I look forward to working with you uh, in this effort. Um, me most of us were in Congress during the last economic crisis, and that was a crisis where, you know, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, the Treasury Secretary, came rushing to the Hill in panic mode. We all got together, and we, we governed in a panic situation. Well, we have before us the most predictable economic crisis uh, we've ever had in this country. So we all know that. Uh, we also, I think, are getting a good grasp of the size and the magnitude of this crisis. Sovereign debt crises are popping up all over the world, and we're kidding ourselves if we don't think it could come to us next. Um, here is one of the problems, though, that I think we're going to have to end up discussing. As we know, health care is the biggest part of this. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't matter how you voted on this last bill, it, it's law now. Um, we just took $529 billion of savings out of Medicare not to go toward extending Medicare solvency, but to go toward a new entitlement. We just increased the size of Medicaid by a third, um, and we have a new entitlement. Uh, in the entitlement speak, many of us have been in this. We used to call it the big three, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. Now it's the big four. Um, that's an issue we're going to have to talk about. Uh, what do we do about this new entitlement? Uh, and the fact that just in this session of Congress, we've already passed into law $1.8 trillion in new spending uh, coupled by $670 billion in new taxes. So I would argue that our fiscal trajectory was bad, and now it's getting worse, and that's just from my personal perspective. Um, I've put a number of ideas out there myself. I kind of think of myself as sort of a canary in the mine shaft on entitlement reform. And if there's anything I've learned from that experience, it is that the American people are ready to be talked to like adults. Uh, they are ready to know the fiscal facts. And if there's one thing we can accomplish with this effort, it is better public education uh, about the nature of this problem and educating our colleagues in Congress about the nature of our problem. Um, I, too, like Jeb said, um, look at this with an open mind, not an empty mind. Um, I really think if you look at the math of all of this, spending is the culprit. Uh, mathematically speaking, you literally cannot tax your way out of this problem. Uh, so I don't think we should try to go down that path of taxing our way out of this problem. Um, if you look at the Congressional Budget Office models that model out the future of our country, the economy shuts down mid-century, and the computer, computer cannot think of any way out of this fiscal problem we have. Um, we know for a fact, it's irrefutable, that we're giving the next generation an inferior standard of living. We've never done that before in this country. You know, the legacy of this country has always been um, you take on the challenges before you to make sure that your kids and grandkids have a better life. All of us agree with that. Uh, the challenge with that legacy. It's going to take a lot of heavy lifting. And I would just simply say, when you look at the spending problem, the sooner you act, the much better off you're going to be. We've got millions of our uh, fellow citizens who have already organized their lives around these programs. Acting very soon, you can assure that their lives won't be uprooted, that we're not going to y yank the rug out from underneath them, and that we can make prospective changes going forward uh, so that people have time to organize their lives, running room, so to speak. But if we keep kicking this can down the road and not confronting these massive spending challenges, that kind of assurance to those who've already organized their lives in these programs cannot be maintained. And so really we are in a situation where time is of the essence to deal with this. And I would just simply say um, we've got to sp spend most of our time, I think, on the spending side of the ledger because, after all, that is what's driving this. At the end of the day, uh, the level of personal and economic freedom uh, living standards, jobs, and international competitiveness have got to be the overarching concerns that drive the kinds of decisions we end up making. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.